Yo, welcome to Community Today of CU Africa, a platform whereby Africans do it their own way. Very good. Here with me is an icon, um, someone whom you wish to know, someone who happens to be a special person in uh, the biggest city in uh, West Africa. Thank you very much. And that person is no other person than um, High Chief Lekon Balu. Thank you very much. You are welcome to community today. Thanks. Um, sir, please can we meet you, sir? We already mentioned my name, Lekon Balu. Some call it Senator Balu. Some call it, as you say, High Chief Balu. Some even say Dr. Balu. So it's your convenience. Um, I hear from this place I call the capital of Africa, not just South Africa, capital of Africa. I hear from Ghana, actually, from your state. Uh, that's about all I can say about myself. The rest would be up to you to say. I'm sure you know a lot more about me than I know about myself. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, Chief Lee Kondalogon is um, a high chief in Ibadan and he's um, OC, he's just elevated to OC of, uh, in, the, in the parlor of uh, Olubadi. And um, today we'll be asking some questions and I'm happy that you people will wish to know who Chibli Kambalo is. And um, he's take on, on some of the questions that we'll be asking. One sir, we want to know how can you assess politics in Nigeria and Africa as a whole? I'm a bit disappointed at our rate of understanding of democracy. I'm a bit disappointed at the quality of our leadership. I'm a bit disappointed with our impatience, with the uh, temperament, with the kind of ego that drive the political aspirations. Uh, the ego that drives the aspiration is inexplicable. I can't really explain it. Everybody wants to be what they want to be, regardless of what circumstances are. That's a terrible ego. He just must have his way as a leader. Why must anybody have his way? As anybody, I was still in a democracy. Everybody will try their bit, benefits will be shared across the board so everybody is happy society. That's what it's about democracy. But our kind of leaders here, yeah, if they want to be governor, they just must be governor. Otherwise, all else will be led to issue. That's not democratic yeah, temperament. That's not democratic attitude. Uh, whatever they want to be, they just must be it. They will cut corners to be it. Otherwise, they will let loose everything that shouldn't be let allowed to get loose. Um, well, the democracy is the government of the people by the people and for the people. That's what it means. You don't see that you are just pursuing global interests at any given point in time. Very rarely do they do it. They will be pursuing personal interests. Suppose you want to run against me for gubernatorial or presidency. I will now smuggle in the factor of age because it favors me. As I'm older than you, age should be important. Anything above 60 only should run for governorship. And that's give illustration, not, not so in details. You too, for your side, will say, no, 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 anything beyond 50 is too old. But that argument will favor your aspiration. And it's a typical illustration of the leader's attitude to aspiration, personal aspirations. The Yoruba people have a proverb. They say, the you want to eat what you should not eat, you will bring smuggling all sorts of stupid variables. I would have smuggled in the, the variable of age to my advantage. You use the same factor and distort it to your advantage. That's the meaning of that. 
Uh, I'll give you a good example going on in Nigeria now. Some say President Goodluck wants to do it third term. He says no, this is the second term. There's, there's, there's an arm of government that's charged with the responsibility for interpreting such things. Now that should be called up as just for food. Now that side of this argument. Go to the judiciary for interpretation. It's not as straightforward as it looks. You may have been sworn in three times and still be doing your second term. You may have been sworn that, you know, we go to rather than do that, Nigerian leaders would invent all sorts of things to pursue self interest. Had the convention recently, some governors walked out. They didn't walk out. I saw them on the ground. With three quarters through with the convention. It was the following Monday when we realized they walked out at the total end of it. And on Monday, they were claiming to have had it at another convention. How could they have done that? You required 21 days' notice for INEC for you to have a convention. The only thing that we gave was done, given by PDP, and they also attended. They took advantage of that convention and came to the convention ground. But when they didn't get what they wanted at the end of the day, they claimed to have had another convention. How, when did they start the demand business on, 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 on INEC? And among these seven people, about three of them want to be presidents. That is all they're pursuing. One of them is desperate to be vice president. That's all they're pursuing. Rather than say, Go by interest forbids this man running. Policies on education, on health, construction of roads, global interest. Things that represent global interest. They won't talk about it. They will hardly even talk about their special skills to be what they want to be. They may not have any special skills. So do you think the G7 walked away because of their unselfish interest? Of course, that's what I'm saying. No, tell me what, what, what other reason they, they, they gave you. Even if you said South South will not be the one to produce the next president, why must it not be so? Isn't South South part of Nigeria? Every section of this country has the right to produce the president. Every section. Patsan, parochialism, we'll get into it. They start talking about sections of the country. We're one country and one people, in spite of the zones. You know? Give me one good reason for them doing what they did. They have not gone to, 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 to the Supreme Court for intervention of what what's this time he wants to sink his. Is it third or second time? They have not sought intervention at, at, at any level. They have not applied intellectual uh, finesse to what point they're trying to make. They just walked out. And then they claim to have had like, another convention, parallel convention. And you media did not help matter by calling them new PDP. There's no new PDP known to our neck, known to our law. Media began to say new PDP. Where is that new PDP? There's no such thing in our law. There's no such thing known to our neck. If you want to prove that uh, good luck is stubborn, is desperate, go to the judiciary. For them to play their role in, in a democratic constitutional manner. There's no other way of doing it. There's no other decent way of doing it. And then some days after, they went to National Assembly to cause confusion. To do a punch up. What kind of leaders are we, do we have? A few days after, those who went there who were members of National Assembly had no business being there, had no business being there, they should not have been there in the first instance. If you felt like talking with your friends in the National Assembly, invite them to private. Uh, 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 Structure, a private home, you know, a private hotel. But they are Nigerians, they have the right to visit the National Assembly. And go as a group of people to come, come and cause confusion. I have a right to go there. I know every corner of National Assembly, well, I was once there myself. I know the area. But I won't go there in a circumstance that, 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 that took them there. I want to talk to, you know, that the, 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 there's a schism in the National Assembly. You now want that leaders to take side with one group. Why would you think it would not lead, lead, lead to a uh, breakdown of law and order? Do you think desperation for power is what is making... There's nothing else to it. Tell, tell me what there is, there is to it. They have just now said the word about United States educational policy, about his social policies. Not the word about uh, things representing global interests. Our roads, state of our roads. 
poverty, unemployment, this is that there. They haven't said a word about it. Go and check the last one month. In Europe, America, they would have spent months criticizing the man's social policies, his educational policies. They would have brought out the worst of his policies. The white side would have been so, so educated about his policies. They would have been tired of him. Even if he goes for so that election, he wouldn't win. He wouldn't go anywhere near winning. This will not defeat him this way, just employing lawless manners of fighting the man. And then sectional parochial tribalism. It won't work in our country. Let me also warn Nigerians and you media people. You think it's a PDP problem? It isn't. It's a Nigerian problem. Nigerian ego. Nigerian temperament. If PDP fails on this issue, the whole country would have failed. So it's not PDP affair. In 19, whatever, in the House of Assembly in Western, the old Western region, was boxing the house that led to complete breakdown of law and order. And the, the, the first coup, the, fir the first coup, anarchy that led to the first coup, that's how it all started. It wasn't seen as uh, the problem of the party in power. Once it exploded, it became national problem. This is also could explode in the same manner. Because they're not going by it correctly. Go to the Supreme Court, seek legal intervention of third or second time, whatever. Um, adopt the policy of exposing inadequacies in the man's policies over time. So that the ordinary man in the streets are saying, ah, we're talking about you, the inadequacies that you, you have you brought out into the open. And the man will say, so will say oh, I, I think I'm inadequate. Let me just let this control it. But the way they're going about it now, if they don't succeed at reconciling, and they go on using this uh, desperate uh, pursuit of self-interest, the entire system will break down. We have a coup against a revolution. These are two options. Then you realize it's not a PDP affair. And it's the same temperament that will make you see a Nigerian educated man in the aircraft. They're just announcing everybody should keep their phone away, uh, 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 closed until or shut down until the aircraft has, and the doors are shut. The aircraft comes to stand still, and the, aircraft, the doors are open. Another, and then, and then he will start putting his own. Hey, Cletus, where are you? I just they arrived for Lagos or arrived for Abuja. The same educated temperament, educated man's, educated man's temperament. They're just giving instructions. He won't listen. If he listens, he hears them. He's not obeying it. The same type of Nigerian temperament. It's not that they are addressing illiterate to. Transfer is, is, is a means of transfer by the elites. Keep your phone switched off until you come that guy come to stand still. He will do the, do, do the opposite. The same temperament that makes a man realize on the road that it's not his turn to go, he would insist on going. The other man will be angry because he thinks he's been taking the right, and then there's a jam up. Requires a schoolboy. 2025 to come and say, You stop, you go, you stop, you go, to clear the congestion in a few minutes. Whereas in America, I will say, Clinton, my friend, go. I don't know you, you don't know me. I say, Go. And I realize letting you go is what will make life better for everybody. But it's not here in my country. Hardly you can't write Nigeria that who will say, Oh, you go first. It happens once in a while, and then I say, This is not in Nigeria. The Nigerian temperament, Nigeria ego. These are the two problems. They're not. At par with the organic values and norms. You know, if you get a small row with your friends, this will be the cause of it. Even when sometimes with your wife. Nigerian temperament, Nigeria go, these are the things we should be addressing as a nation, as a people. Mr. President, you should even go on the, on the air and tell us to try and tame our temperament and ego as a people. What does it cost us? What does it matter who is president? As long as it was elected by the majority of our people. And they start saying, uh, tribal stupid arguments, parochial arguments, they would exploit it to the advantage of personal, personal aspirations, personal pursuits. <laughs> if we don't take these two variables in the next few years, the country breaks down, it will not be pretty careful anymore. Our opponents are happy. Whereas people might have about two or three groups, some of them have. 20 parties in one. When their own starts to be worse than, than PDP's affair. And it will start inevitably. Either Nigerians, are they not? 
Thank you, sir. No Do you see PDP coming back, resolving their internal crisis? They would. They would. In time. They How would. soon? You know, there's a uh, one thing you keep, keep on ignoring. That's media people. With all our bad ego and temperaments, once everybody is brought close to realizing that everybody will lose that completely, then they will reconcile themselves to sharing power. Are you with me? That is the stage we are fast approaching. When we, have, when we got to that point in time, everybody will close hands and uh, the people will close again. Even the G7 are not as united as they look. They are pursuing conflict interests. Three people want the presidents. They can only, they can only have one president. One that is desperate to have vice president. There are others who are not saying anything yet, but they also want the vice president. They are in the same office. Nigerians. What is wrong with that? With us, our temperament and our ego. Tell it, we will be a different country. They're not the bad people as such, except for these variables. And the variables, unfortunately, are not at par with the organic values and norms. That is the problem. Anyway, let me not bore you. Thank you very much. You're very um, welcome. We want to, you, please, can you assess President Goodluck, a better Jonathan the government? Is, do you think he's doing well? They're, they're not even allowing us to, to, to they're not allowing us to assess his government, to assess his performance. I know he went to school for as long as he would want to let go to school. That was why I was sold out on him in the first instance. First time we're having it, a truly educated PhD holder in the country. But he's under too much, too many conflicting pressures. And it takes time to learn to tame those pressures and to stabilize yourself. Meanwhile, these people are not allowing us to assess his performance. We are too busy talking about where he hails from, talking about uh, our own personal aspirations, and so on and so forth. These are not variables we use to assess a man. And because we are not allowed to assess him objectively in terms of output and performance, it's difficult for anyone to say exactly he's done well, he's not done well. Another factor about leadership in this country is that your subordinates sometimes make a lot of enemies for you. you they would be help you to run the government and the country in the way you would not have run it yourself if you had, if you had, uh, uh, if you were to have your way. Some ministers are so hopeless, and you and I will blame good luck for their performance. Some aides are so hopeless. And it's not just president, even you and I at a small level. They'll be communicating impressions that are far from the way you want things to be run. But as I said, those who are opposed to you will be fighting in manners that will not even permit us to assess your objective. So I think it's a bit too uh, too uh, a bit too difficult to assess him objectively. But as High Chief Lekon Balogun, yes. what can you say? Is he doing good? Is he on the right track? Or, or is he not doing good? Well, the indications are that in some areas we're doing well, in some areas we may not be doing that well. And like I said, some of the areas where we may not be doing that well might even be you might even find other people are responsible for it. You know? Power, for instance. At one time they were stabilizing, it all looked good. Suddenly everything's collapsing once again. And if you probe deeply into it, it may not be his failure to provide resources to do it, his failure to provide the wherewithal to get it done, maybe his failure of some people much below his level to play the, the game as, as to be played. Again, Nigerian temperament, Nigerian integrity. Like, He's run to the entire hierarchy of Nigeria. Overall rating, mm. what would you give him? Pass mark or below pass mark? No, I think it's too soon. Let, let, me, let me study a bit more. We're already two years gone. Yes, we are. What would you say? With a year and a half of that wasted, with this kind of uh, uh, self-pursuit of some individuals, individual leaders. Would you say he's on the right track, pass mark, or he's still below pass mark? Too early. We'll talk the next couple of months. I'm doing a study right now. I'm doing serious studies. Too, 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 too early. But they're not giving us a chance to even assess him properly. Where these other people are coming from. 
Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, what can you say as regards to what happened in um, River State? The other time that led to the crisis in the House of Assembly in River State. And recently, um, the governor, Rutmi Amechi, said that he was um, locked out from, uh, locked from entering his um, um, government uh, house. Mm. What can you actually say as regards to that? What All happened in that? River State, what's been happening in River State is a, is a bit of a shame. A shame on the entire nation, a shame on River State. And a shame on the assembly members. I got five people in the overthrow. How many people? When so many people. Uh, in the democracy, there's no way I can explain that. Five against 19 or 20 or whatever it was. Can't remember the exact figure. And then the governor has not held matters because we are aware that he's very desperate to vice president. The president hails from his own. That's like antagonizing the president too. You know? Uh, everybody's wrong in case of the state. Everybody's wrong. Everybody is not democratic. Everybody should be to try and to strive harder to be more democratic. Because of him being locked out of the uh, government house, again, another great shame on the nation. How can a government governor be locked out of his uh, uh, premises, environment? Of course, the police denied it. So who are we to say that you do Yes, the police denied it that already he had pre-information that that place will actually be barricaded. You know, based what, on that. What reason they give? The barricade? Because of security reasons. Because security If they had genuine security reasons, it was also, they also designed to protect him. Unless they ensure they didn't have any security reasons, and he can't contest what you have. You can't contest what I have. If I say I have security reasons, you can't say I didn't have. Because it's in my possession, not yours. No, it's, it's everybody must go to the back to join join board and, and find out what is democratic. What what would the majority of Nigerians want to see happen? Do you think Governor Ruth Miamich is a Democrat? A, a Democrat? Oh, far from it. Far from it? It was part of the G7 that we were talking about a little earlier. If you got Democratic, you would have, they would have played the game differently. If you had a single one of them who was Democratic, you would have we would have uh, declared that probably I'm not quite in tune with this group. Although I'm a part of them, I can't accept this approach. You would have been heard shouting that I should go to court to challenge the third time aspiration, if it's third time truly. I don't, I don't know. And the of Zaraki, he done his two terms. He has a proxy. Uh, it's like third time unconstitutional, third time by proxy. You know? I know also he's aspiring to be president at the same time. You know, it's it's, uh, it's uh, our country. We have a problem. We have oh, a problem. thank you. You are still welcome. listening to Chief uh, High Chief Lekon Balogun. Thank you very much. Uh, um, great to my brother. Thank you so much. You're it's welcome. still a uh, community today of Sea Africa, whereby Africans are saying their things their own way. Thank you. Um, sir. And, th and thank God we can say our things our own way now. <laughs> Never used to be so, so <laughs> time ago. Sir, as a prominent Ibadan politician, Thank you. do you believe in the general saying that no governor can rule your state twice? I don't believe in it. It right. just means that no, no governor has performed well enough for us to permit the second term. Uh, if it wasn't for the partisanship of 1983, when I arrived with the governorship myself, well, I could have been returned the second term. If we were to rely purely on the strength of the votes each candidate attracted, I was a candidate myself. Well, I would have won. I guess he even won. But federal rights uh, made my brother, Dr. to and made him governor. It's not that we don't, we, are we so stupid that we can't see a good performer and a good performer that's deserving a second term? We're not a stupid people. It's a wrong saying. So it may not have happened that somebody had done twice. I would have done I would have done that twice. Even in his grave, they still use the name to win elections. What nonsense. <laughs> Even in his grave, people use all of the name to some people are, 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 are holding on to the name. They hardly knew him or his policies. They just say, I'm was I was disciple and they win. It's not true. Not true. So sir, how can you assess the current Adola Jumobi led administration in the state? 
It's too early to assess that. I don't want to start assessing them now. In the next few months, we'll start talking. I just, uh, anything I've said to it's like privately, I can say here. Yeah. The government is anti people. I've said that to privately. Anti people. But I want to develop the thesis at this point in time. I would like to have said a lot of the things to them privately and then come out with you. It would be like a betrayal of a personal relationship, brother, brother. But the government is anti people. Anti people to a fault. Your beautiful, beautiful environment without providing. Uh, uh, for our emotional needs. That's why I have this truth, they're having blood pressure and so on and so on. You say you're a beautiful environment. Then who will live there if you kill all of us before you finish the beautiful the, the beautiful process? Who will live there? You know? But well, it's not time to talk about this government in my own stage. More time is required. You're already gone. You can use half of the year to actually uh, assess someone who is going to, who is doing well, who is Even if it's third year, do. you must assess the timeliness of whatever you want to say. Are you with me? You must assess the overall effectiveness of your contribution. It's not time when it will have optimal effectiveness. We'll talk later. Okay, thank you. Since the demands of uh, Chief Adedibu, the People's Democratic Party in your state, seems to be on the decline Losing the 2011 general election to the opposition party, what do you think went wrong with PDP in our state? Nothing, really. We lost the election. ACN didn't win the election. That's so the who, fundamental difference. So what happened? We lost the, We chose to lose the election because of the character of the gov governance we were going through at that time. Uh, we lost the election. ACN didn't win the election. Can you shed more light on that? If was it more than half of your, PDP your Ibadan project? No, no, no. What is Ibadan project? We removed that Ibadan governor alive and put Bayakala there, non Ibadan. I used to be amazed when they used to talk about uh, when I used to talk about it's because I'm not Ibadan. But other than that, he replaced was an Ibadan person. Yet we removed him for him, a non Ibadan person. We talk about another parochial. So when you said ACN didn't win the election, then what happened? I said PDP lost the election. Okay. More than half of PDP people worked for worked for Akala's failure, including you, sir. Yes, certainly, and I have no regrets about it. Why did you do that? I risked my life to make Akala government the first instance. Remember, I came in through impeachment. And the second term, 2007, I also worked for his success. All he kept doing was insulting me, insulting or you're insulting my person. Even though my key brother was his commissioner. All he kept doing was insulting anything he had. Anything, yeah, even anything poor, by the way he went about things. I'm a social democrat, you know. Uh, it didn't rule, it didn't go about things correctly. Everybody knew. Asked you actually everybody. worked against your party to enthrone Not against my party. party. I worked for the president's, the president's uh, victory in Oyo. It's still my party. The president was not, or not of another party. If he had worked against my interest all the four years he was there, that was not anti party. You now look at my reaction at the end of the day. I say it's anti party. Nonsense. It's not the definition of anti party in the democracy. He had worked four years against my interest and global interest, not even my own personal interest. Governance. If he had done all that, and I said, look, I can't stomach it another four years. Works for Mr. President's success, and he went. He won in New York. I said, I will not work for this man's success. What's wrong with that? If he's, he's if he's uh, side landing of my of my definition of global interest was not anti party. Why would man not help him to win again the anti-party? Doesn't make sense. It's not logical. If Mr. President decides to run for an election come 2015, will you still work for him? Why not? If it's the backhand of the party. Why not? Backhand of the party. Like I told you, these people are even opposing him and not going about it correctly. How do they do with the going about it now? And the light of uh, 
the fact that they are tyrannical, autocratic, you know, democratic, uh, parochial, and so on, I work for him. I work for him, so I prefer him to them. But the fact that you said that the current governor is actually anti-people, yes. do you think that come 2015, your party will actually um, emerge the winner in your state? Oh, certainly, I'm, I'm convinced about it. I'm very sure. But today, it seems as uh, your party in the in the state, they are in disarray. They are in disarray. Leaders are com 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 they're, they're disagree on a few things. And they're coming together already, you're not aware. Who is the right leader right now? That will be for me to answer. You are to find out. This is I'm also one of them. You are a founding member of PDP. You should be able to tell us. No, I say it will be for me as one of the leaders. Should I call myself the leader of the party in the state? You should call other people, not me. Are you with me? You should you should call ask other people in the state. You have your friends there, ask them who the leader of the party is in the state. They will tell you. It's not for me to answer. But I know we're coming together. And a very firm manner that guarantees our success as a party. So, are you saying again? Ego, ego problem has affected PDP leadership in the state, and that's what you're inter misinterpreting to mean, uh, with that, mean that we have reached a point of no return. We have not, and that we're already reconciling. I'm very seriously, too. Very seriously, we would win. Hands so do you down. think the reconciliation will work? It's it's bound to work. I told you when people are uh, disagreeing on non-tangible subjective factors, the day they come to collective failure, then they'll close their ranks. They'll close their ranks. And that's what has happened to people in the state. When we reconciled ourselves, we discovered that not to reconcile is to, for everyone to lose. You think we have uh, reached that stage now. Not, uh, allow Akala, whoever want to work with you? He's my brother. When the chips are down, we and I had a meeting about four weeks ago. I went to his house. When I said we should meet, he said, brother, okay, let's meet. And I said, Benway. He said, I remember that brother, the last time I, I, we met, I came to your house. He said, too much to come. I said, I'll come. And I went the next day to his house. He just as I'm thinking the game went around, you have become aware of the, the, the global unity that we're achieving in PDP or your I'm talking. I'm sure we're all related somehow. He's my brother, my younger brother. I'm very good talking terms. We I mean, have a small difference in personal aspiration, like I said before. Unfortunately, I'm not aspiring to be anything in this state anymore. Not, not at all. So it makes it easier for me to understand those who are aspiring and uh, I retain the freedom to advise them if their aspirations will run into conflict with global interests. Yeah, no problem. So are you assuring that come 2015 PDP in you know, your state will swear, swing I swear, a surprise? I swear. It wouldn't be any surprise, we would win. It will be obvious long before then, but it's not quite time to talk about the details yet. We'll see. But do you think contesting who is going to be the governor within the PDP will not be an issue that we actually still further scatter the party? Why would this scatter the party? Everywhere in the world people aspire to one office. Somebody, the only one person gets it. Why should we be, be an exception? We will sort ourselves out. We will explain why it should be X and Y and not to do that and all that. We'll get that. We'll get that. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. The community today of Sea Africa, thank where you. Africans say their things and do their things their own way. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, I want to ask, as an high chief in Ibadan, do you think Governor Abiola Ajumo of his administration is doing enough to give deserved recognition to traditional ruler in the state? I doubt it, yes. but I don't want to discuss it now. I don't think he's doing enough. Why, for instance, would this top about have been chairman of traditional council? I always I ask council of others and chiefs. Because it's time to be a chairman, then they stop as, as the, as the, as the, the council will meet at all. They stopped that meeting. And the pretext that Allah was in court. When Shah one Allah and Umbada were in court against Allah's generalship, they continued to meet, for God's sake. How they would explain that to people when the, when the time comes, I'm waiting. You know, if a matter is in court, it is said to be some judiciary in law. Everyone should stay where they were. We had begun to meet, even when Abiola came into our power. They stopped that meeting. They didn't stay where they were. 
If they were to respect the councils of UGC, we are being, we continue meeting, mother will be in court. If the court decided to reverse it, of course, then we can do, they can do what they did. Responding to court's directive. But right now, we were in court, we were meeting. You now came and said, stop meeting. On that would be the challenge. How you would explain that to you, like when the study comes, you will see. But I'm not saying much beyond that at this stage. Thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome. Thank you. you are actually one of those that is championing the creation of the Baron State. Right. Do you think we still can observe it? Um, going by what the National Assembly had the last time. I suppose the National Assembly, I suppose with them. Uh, for me, states are administrative conveniences. People are being subjective and emotional about it. What stopped Nigeria from being 50, 50 states and about 36 initially? If every, every family wants to become a state, so be it. You know? But if you look at the socio-economic benefits of having your own state, of course, I'm all for the state. And let's have it. It's not better. Uh, but I also have some potential national assembly. I was once one of them. So I understand what they're going through. Are you going to end up making every family a state? You have to be careful. There, there's a lot of Research they have to do. There's a lot of data they have to peruse and digest. So I'm not surprised that they are dragging their feet. But if they must create anything in Nigeria, if I understand what they're going to create it. So it means you're actually supporting their, what the, their decision right now? Or you're against their decision? National Assembly? Yes. I am not against their decision. I'm not in favor of their decision. I'm just saying. Let them digest the data, expose the data to us, us. Let's share the, the experience of having that data, such data at our disposal. And then together we decide what we do to the issue of creation of states. But if there must create any state in Nigeria, if the state must come first. Thank you so much. If I state or no state to be created in Nigeria. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. What are your views? about the dissolution of the cabinet a few days ago by Adela I don't want to comment on those things now. That, that's uh, the governor's business. Let's see how he handles it. And it's too early to start commenting on this. He just did it for 10 hours ago. Let's see how he handles it. Let's see how his own people will react to it. Let's see how their public react to it. Let me also not make the mistake of most Nigerians make. They will have no data they will comment on. Let me collect more data, please. It's his prerogative. Let him do it and face the music. The music might be nice, it might be not so not so nice. It's, it's, the choice is his. And then at that stage, the public and one of the of the public will now start commenting. But you're a stakeholder. Yeah, I know. Well, let me not prejudge anything. Let me be shared by my data before I start commenting. Your view is very important. I'm even aware. to your followers. I know, I know. But I also urge them to be patient. All I've seen myself is be, be patient. Be careful, be patient before you start commenting. Let me collect more data. Let me understand why he did it. What went wrong or went right, if it's right. What he wants to correct, I want to see it. Right now, I don't know what he wants to correct. I don't know what he had at his disposal before he did the dissolution. Let me wait and see what he had at his disposal. Events might prompted me to saying why he did it. Let me get a bit more of that before I start coming to you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. The former governor, um, Rashid Adewoli Labada, yes. came out the last time mm -hmm. to actually uh, mention the issue of the flyover. That it was the flag flyover? Flyover. Flyover. Was actually flyover. Over budget. What is your stand on that? Over what? As regards to the pricing. Mm. Yeah. If it was overdone, if it was inflated, it was right. If it wasn't, it was wrong. Very stakeholder, you are in Ibadan. You I you you know a lot about construction too. Do you think um he's saying the right thing or do you think um he's actually saying the wrong thing? 
These two people are my brothers, they are loggerheads. You want me to take side with one against the other? No, we want you to say the way it is, the way you think it is. When we reach that level, I will talk reflecting global public interest. We've not reached that stage yet. When will we reach that level? When will we reach that stage? I would know. The, you're the, you're the a media man, I'm a politician. The bridge, the bridge has already been constructed yes. and it's there. So why is it taking you that long? More and more that are coming out by the day. More importantly, these people are loggerheads already. And for me, they're like six and a half dozen, two of them, six and a half dozen. As far as I'm concerned, why should I be rushing to take side against the other? Not good for me, not good for my party, not good for global uh, interests. Let me watch a little bit more. Get my facts right. Your brother, as you have said, the former governor, uh, Senator Rashid Lavajan. He's my brother, he's my friend too. He's also preparing to be the governor of um, your state. He want to come back to Agogi 2015. Do you think he's standing a chance against your party? No way. No How chance. How do you mean? I said no chance. He wouldn't win. <laughs> Even 2011 that he ran, a lot of people thought we were all together. We were not together. But I've started not to antagonize him for the pers for personal reasons. This time around, we won't spare him. We won't spare him. But there, is, there are plans going on to form an alliance between Accord and PDP. And you're part of the decision. What do you think? A Accord with PDP and Alliance? Yes. Or well, are you part of that discussion? I am not. If I'm part of the discussion, you're describing. a party man. It's everywhere. People are guessing. Ah, if I got would come back to PDP and work together, next have victory easier. Sir? And that would have been next have victory easier. And that would be the best thing that can happen to accord themselves. But if they want to go into law, I should think it will become governor and I can't seek it. It won't. It won't happen. The best base is PDP. And they will welcome back to PDP anytime. But if they are promoting an understanding between the two parties, so be it as well. But it won't be under Lavajar's governorship. Certainly not. Last time, the, the governor of the state said the only party that still exists in New York State is Accord. And, uh, Who said that? The, from, uh, the present governor, Abiola Jr. No, I think he was talking absolute nonsense. In that case, I won't spare him. He must have been talking nonsense. He says, I don't exist. My party does not exist. I can't even speak. How can you say he's making sense of what he's saying? But we, don't even know. we don't even know who is the leader of the party in the state. You don't know me. You don't know Adjojo. You don't know... You don't know that Rukia so many people are saying I'm the leader. This person is saying I'm the leader. I am not saying I'm the know. leader. We don't know that this Leaders, is this someone is that this we're is, going to say this yes, is, he is the leader of the party in the state. through a process. Is there not mechanically impulse that like you're wanting to impose a leader? And we're going through that process now. People are getting to know who the leader is. Over time, it's become not everybody. How soon will that be? Mechanical. Who is the time? Next week, next month. That's not life. That's not the wrong person. That's not talking about a process. The most has a process. Leaders emerge. They're not imposed. Ah! The truth. You're being a Nigerian now, even the media, a good media man. An intelligent media man, you want to be very mechanical like just of Nigeria. No, I wouldn't mechanical. It's emerging, it's emerging. If you like close your eyes to it and say you don't know, it will come. It's emerging. Those of us who are leaders of PDP know who our leaders are. The final leader will emerge at the end of the day. The leader of the party is going to emerge. But the process we're going through already and getting clearer by the day. When should all your state people expect this? I can't, put a, a I can't put a time limit but on you. But you are part of the league, you're part of the founding father. It doesn't, it doesn't father. give me the right to be a dictator or cletus. I don't have to be a dictator. I don't have to say, mechanically, it will happen next week. It will be wrong. It will happen. Ask some of your colleagues who are business by now. They will say they have an idea that so and so is the leader. It will come. But it's not for me to say, since I'm also one of them. It will be wrong. It will be moral to be subjective. He's my political pickings, my son, my brother. He's close to me, I'm close to him. Beautiful, well, I remember him. 
you know, for Zima Kudu, they are my brothers. And saying it, saying it, uh, the Afghan way, they're my children actually. No problem. So I want to ask you, sir. You probably want me to impose one of them now, now as a candidate. No, I won't. The candidate is my three process. What process would that be? Why are you going through the process, uh, Cletus? Just be patient. Don't be a victim of the Nigerian uh, temperament. Be patient. Be patient. Okay, thank you. Very You're too much. intelligent to be a victim of that uh, temperament thing. Thank you very much. Or sir. the ego theory. Be careful. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, how can you um, actually assess the APC right now in your state? APC? Yes. Yeah. How about Panadol? <laughs> Emojion. APC, my crutch. There are about 20 parties in APC. There are CPC, there are CNN, there are ACN, there is. Let the, let the thing crystallize and we'll find out what the APC is. I was talking about three aspirants of presidency in the, in the group of G7 or something. There are about 10 presidential aspirants in the APC. That's why I say it's the APC called now for the Panadol. Don't talk about assessing the list. Again, they'll be too early. But I've, said, I've said enough about the way deep inside I feel about them. Let that be sufficient for now with your listeners. APC. About like 20 parties in one. Today, people said that the solution of cabinet by Abiola Ajimobi led administration mm. is actually to prepare for 2015 governorship election. Do you think it's too early to start preparing for that? Why is it too early? You can start preparing for it even if you're preparing to fail. So it's not too early to start preparing to, for, to fail. How can you say he's preparing to fail? Even when um, uh, you, you are a member of Ulubadon Palace, mm -hmm. and uh, Ulubadon gave him a kind of endorsement of good work, that's a title called Ariatunduche mm -hmm. of Ibadan Land. Means someone who is doing very good, and who is actually trying to transform the city called Ibadan. You know, if that is coming from um, the royal father of that state or of the first class in Africa, how would you say otherwise? I haven't said anything, anything to the contrary. I'm not, I'm not, I don't dare challenge the uh, judgment on issues. And we're not talking about that at all. Uh, if you were looking at things objectively, you see the beautification process going on, you say yes. But if you're looking at the consequence of that beautification, that means you're looking beyond the first, the first person. You're looking at the consequences of the beautification. You find underneath a lot of uh, a lot of uh, unprintable, unprintable uh, factors. I told you before. As those ones are not conspicuous. Somebody's wife was her shop was d d destroyed. The husband's shop was destroyed. The child was in the private school previously. They can't afford the private school anymore. They're not to the child in public school. The child is not very familiar with public school. He's not coping. Uh, the father developed blood pressure. The mother develops blood, blood pressure. One of them had a stroke. And it's all over like that. That would look better to see all that. But I'm in the field. I'm a social scientist. I'm aware of those things. So it will take time also to persuade the wider public to understand what we're saying. You know, and I've said this much to my brother at the private level. That's the of himself. But you drag me to think that I said it's too early to discuss. And uh, you are smarting me. We'll talk later. I consider that you're smarter than me. Although that may be your back. Let me bore you, but you're you smarting me. <laughs> I'll let you I'll let you have the hook today. Next time I won't let you have smart me. Well, it's still community today. Thank you. We are on with um, Chief. Hi Chief. Thank you. Thank you very much.
very welcome for actually having time to speak with us thank you but we want to ask you the last question go ahead what should nigerians expect from your party and come down to the state what should are your state indigenous expect from your party? Well, Nigerians across the country, the most important part of Nigeria is PDP. You can express your opinion. You can disagree with the leaders and say so openly. You can even do so stupid like this G7 we're doing recently. Even stupidly. You're still members of the party. You keep talking. You don't dare try that with the other parties in Nigeria, especially APC. You don't dare. You won't live to tell the story. It's not that all is well in APC. It is a fear of what will happen if you to express your opinion in a democratic manner. So try and keep it up that way, Nigerians, and assess people on the basis of democratic values, parties, the basis of democratic values, and appreciation of democratic norms. Um, if you do that, you can't go wrong. You won't miss the right path. At the state level, the same story. Assess people on the basis of the uh, ability to listen to global interests, the price of global interests, and uh, don't condone tyranny, don't condone oppression from either party. The least guilty of those things in Nigeria today, today's Nigeria is PDP. And so I ask you to please understand that maybe slowness to respond to issues. But certainly that was our question. Thank you very much. Your final words, sir. You said final words last the last question you said. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Go what ahead. What should African what should Nigeria and what should your state expect from high chief Lake Valley in the next two years? Well, I hope I'll be part of those who would uh, prescribe the democratic values for the people to emulate and to live by. I hope, I, I hope I'm part of the team that would uh, encourage the growth of democracy in the country. I hope I'm part of those who would promote the interests of the global majority again the democratic definition. And I plead with my people to please bear with us and try and understand that global interest should be the most, the most, the greatest determinant of which party they will affiliate with, which way they will cast their vote, and so on and so forth. I think I leave, leave my advice at this point. Thank you very much. It's been a wonderful time chatting with you. Thanks, you still remain Thanks a lot, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Community today of CEO Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Africa, the pride of the world. Fantastic. Fantastic. Pride of the world. Oh, yeah.